Pentecost Sunday, and we are doing things a little bit different today. So I'm going to read from the Mass today, reading of the Acts of the Apostles. When the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind. And it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in heaven in Jerusalem. At the sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not these people who are speaking Galileans? How then does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phlegra, Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome. Both Jews and converts to Judaism, Christians and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. Praise, Praise be to the Lord in Jesus Christ. Today is the birth of the church, as we have said before. And I was asking someone, you know, just a couple of days ago, are you going to come to Pentecost? And they said, what's that? So I hope that everybody in this room knows what Pentecost is. And if you don't, that doesn't mean you're a bad toad. <laughs> it just means that you haven't learned, you know, the scriptures. But Pentecost is the reason that we are all here in this room. And as we were saying before, it's so important that you understand that it's never about the person who's standing in this pulpit. It's never about the denomination. It's always about the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. That's what we come for in this room. Because the prayer has always been said, as long as I have been a child in the Lord, you can take the buildings away and you can take all of us away because it will not make you holy. The only thing we can't lose is the Holy Spirit. That is what makes you holy inside. That's what makes you of God inside because God is a Holy Spirit and God chooses those in whom will live with him in his kingdom. And in his kingdom is holiness. God has chosen holiness over darkness, over worldliness. That's where he lives. And in order for us to get there, we needed Jesus to die on the cross for us and forgive us of our sins. But we also needed him to send us the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. And so the Acts of the Apostles are rich on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and is written for those who love God. So this morning, if you happen to look at the bulletin board when you walked in today, you saw a bunch of pictures up there. And I'm going to use that as an example this morning as part of what the Lord wants me to deliver unto you. And in that, those pictures up there is the first place that we began before God up on the mountain in East Warren. It was down in a cellar, which was converted. And, and if you see it, you will see men and women who were young, because if you don't look closely, you won't recognize who they are. 
because today they're full of wrinkles. <laughs> Their eyes are sagging. All kinds of things have happened during the last 30, 40 years. But the amazing thing is that the Holy Spirit moved on a bunch of young people who had a desire to serve the Lord. And that's what the Holy Spirit comes for. The Holy Spirit comes for those who have a desire to draw closer to Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes for those who really want to serve and know God. Who are not satisfied with this life, but know inside of themselves there's something more. And they know that more is God Almighty, but they don't know how to get there. And so the Holy Spirit is the person of God that comes to help us to draw closer to Jesus. And amazing things happen when the Holy Spirit comes. Amazing things happen. These group, which I'm using, is not just one group that ever happened. It happens to many people in whom the Holy Spirit joints together. But this group came from all walks of life, from all parts of the country, moved to this one place. The Holy Spirit positioned them in this one place to begin to work with them. And today is not only the birthday of the church, the birthday of you and the birthday of you, but it happens to be the birthday of this church, too. <laughs> yeah. Because on a day, these young people, a day after the resurrection, they got together and they worked and gutted this building. This building only went to here. There was a second story and a small roof over. Took the roof off. Put this addition on it here. Began all this, the pews that you're sitting on, they came out of a fire sale in, in uh, Boston. Refinished them, put them back together. They were eight feet long instead of what they are right now. Cut them down, put them all back together. Built these stained glass windows, did this wood. I'm, I can't even tell you what went on in this place, this group of people. And on Pentecost Sunday, in seven weeks, seven weeks, this place was filled and dedicated to the Lord. So happy birthday. And to every one of those people in whom God used to do this, I pray that God richly blesses them wherever they are. There's only a remnant still left here today. God's used them and sent them to all other directions in their life because you know why? He's in charge. He uses people for a moment and then he pushes them somewhere else to use them somewhere else. You see, one of the things that, the, that people don't know about the Holy Spirit is that not only is he in, in the business of building churches, but he's also in the business of tearing down organizations. You see, the weakness in man, whether it be Christians, whether it be Jewish, whether it be Islam, or any other, is a spirit that enters into us. An earthly religious spirit. I don't know why we're so prone to that kind of attack. And in those systems, people get hurt. So many people cry outside, I don't want to have anything to do with religion. Because it has caused so much hurt and pain in my family's life. And it is true. 
But the trouble is that old saying, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But the Holy Spirit, no matter what religion it is, is always there trying to lead people to Jesus Christ, to the Son of the living God. I don't know if you've, if you've recently watched some of the testimonies that our Islamic brothers and sisters, when Jesus has stood before them and revealed himself by the power of the Holy Spirit, the conversion that takes place in their lives, the release that happens to them, that they don't have to be under the tyranny of, I've got to work out my salvation. I've got to work this whole thing out in order for me to obtain God. That's not the message of the Word of God. That's not the message of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's not the message of the God that you serve today. The message is Jesus died on that cross and freely gives you salvation if you would just come and humble yourself before him and say, I am sorry for the sin of my life. You see, there was a man named Nicodemus and he said unto the Lord, Lord, what must they do to inherit eternal life? This man was a scholarly man. This man knew the scriptures back and forth. He represented so many that did. But still in knowing those scriptures didn't have inside of his heart the satisfaction of knowing that he would be in heaven. And Jesus said unto him, Nicodemus, Unless a man be born again, he shall not enter into the kingdom of Almighty God. And he said to him, oh, how can it be so? I'm an old man. I can't go back into my mother's womb. And Jesus made it clear in that moment. Clear there is a difference in this earth. He said, what is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of spirit is spirit. It's a Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is spirit as a Holy Spirit. He said, unless you are born again, you're not going to see this. The world cannot see around us the kingdom of God. The world cannot see that there is a spirit world. The world cannot see that there's God and His saints and the heavens and the glory cannot see it because the only way to see it is to have a born-again experience. God has to overcome you. Jesus Christ has to enter into your heart. You are the one that has to say to Him, there's got to be something more than this world. There's got to be something more than these shootings. There's got to be something more than these volcanic eruptions. There's got to be something more than these nations wanting to fight nations. There's got to be more than, than religion fighting religions. There's got to be more than this that's we're going into, causing fear and destruction. There's got to be four, more than 43% of Americans today, middle class, can't even pay their bills anymore. There's got to be something more to that. Oh, so is the answer. The world's problems. And I know Albert Einstein said, you're never going to solve the problems the way that they are created. It's ridiculous. It's madness to think. You need something outside of it. And the only one that we know outside the problems that we have in this world is the kingdom of all. It's God Himself, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I want to see that world. I want to see that hope. I want to see that what my faith has been telling me about. 
and I need Jesus in my heart to open those doors so that I can see the kingdom of Almighty God. You see, when I was young, I read and read and read this word of God. It didn't mean anything. It was a nice story. But the day that I met Jesus Christ, the words jumped out of the scriptures after me. And the day that the Holy Spirit came upon me, I began to understand what the scriptures were saying. Today, nothing has changed. It's still the same. Now, honestly, on this Pentecost of 2018, you and I know that the answer to our world problems, the stress in our world, the stress in our lives, where we're at right now, is God. Is the Lord. His words, His life. It cannot be compromised. It's almighty God. There's nobody else, is there? You see, a new generation of leadership is coming. I came out of the great charismatic revival. But the word of God, the plan of God, the author of it all says, there's going to be revival on this earth as such as never been seen before. But we are incorrect if we think it's going to be the same way that we came. He's God Almighty. And there's going to be a new revival, and it's beginning already. And this is not a revival that's inclusive of only Christians. This revival is going to be with every religion and every country and nation on the face of the earth. I'm sorry, Michelle, but I get so excited for the revelation. For the revelation of what God is doing. Don't ever think that the world is in control. And don't ever think that the darkness that is happening right now and the stuff that's going on is in control. Because it was already written that there would be a day of darkness on the earth. And it's already written how we will navigate through those days. But believe me, when Jesus said on the cross his words, it is finished, it is finished. The plan of God is finished. We have not come into the revelation of it yet. But God wins, folks. God wins, folks. And who is here to see that that plan of God is executed? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in charge. So don't look to man to be in charge. Don't look to man's plan and devices to be in charge. Look to God. Look to the power of the Holy Spirit. Look to the uniting of the Holy Spirit. I love this passage in Romans. There's so many of them I love. But this one I'll read today. It's called... The glorious destiny. I am convinced that any sufferings we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of the glory that is about to be unveiled within us. Do you hear that? Within us. Within us. What is the Holy Spirit doing? He is making you the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? He's saying that God's desire is that He would build you as the living stones of the temple of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't need buildings. He doesn't need these big things. What He's looking for is you. A willing heart for God's presence, God Almighty's presence to dwell in.
For against within us, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. Remember, I told you, you need the Holy Spirit to see this. You need the Holy Spirit. This is what the conflict of the world that we are living in right now. You see, if you don't know God and you don't know the Holy Spirit, then you don't know that there is a devil. It's myth. A myth. But this whole conflict is a conflict between good and evil. That's why Star Wars is so popular. <laughs> It is the conflict, age-old conflict between good and evil. And the whole universe is a, in this conflict. For the, against its will, the universe itself has had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequences of human sin. But now, with eager expectation, all creation longs for the freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with its wonderful freedom coming to be God's children. Jesus. To this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation as if it were the contractions of labor for childbirth. And it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the spirits also inwardly groan as we passionately long for the experience of our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being transformed. For this is the hope of salvation. What is the answer to the world? What is the coming moving of the Holy Spirit to this world? Christ in you. The Holy Spirit in you. You know what a blessing that you are to me, Kelly? Because I see that in you. Mm -hmm. Every day when them mom and dads drop those babies, I'm looking through this window right here as they go up the steps. And nothing is more impressive, precious to them than that child in their arms. We who have held them all know that. They get a little older, well. <laughs> Daniel, I'm not me and you. <laughs> but they're trusting you. Now there's two types of people that they can trust that care to. A person who is a hireling or a person who has a call. And you have a call. Because you're always looking to find ways to help those children grow. Right? You're with her all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a job for her. It's a call. And it's people like you that are going to be the people that change the world. Paul was right when he says the universe, all creation groans. Paul was waiting for the moment of the revelations of the sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. Come on, you see that the struggles that is happening in, in Jerusalem right now? You see the miracle that is happening in our day and age and, and most people don't even know what's going on? 
But that is, that is the seat of the kingdom of God. That is where the Bible says is the mother and all the rest of us are the children. That is where God is centering His plan there. That is where we are going. This plan of God is going to be executed on this earth, whether the world thinks so or not, whether they can rise up with all of the munitions and stuff, and nuclear bombs and whatever they think they can have. God is stronger than all. But here's the deal. In that Jerusalem, in that kingdom, God is gathering His people. He's been gathering His people. And I tell you again, it will not be limited to Christians. It will not be limited to Muslims. It will not be limited to Jewish people. I tell you, from the very onset of the charismatic movement, what took place when the Holy Spirit fell, we came out of our denominations. We came out and we filled stadiums and we worshiped together. We didn't care what we were. All we wanted to do was worship Almighty God. Worship the true God, the living God. We will come out of wherever we are and we will come with the revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord. That all authority in the heaven and on the earth and under the earth has been given over to one name, the name of Jesus. That is the revelation that we have received by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the blessing. That is the uniting. That is the one voice, the one language that we hold together. That is what we are given together on Pentecost. It is you. It is your children. And yet this world that you're a part of is trying to hold you back from your destiny, from your calling with God. That's what the Word has always showed us. Remember we said, until you come, you can't understand that there's a difference between the world and the Spirit. There's a difference between your flesh and the Spirit of God. This your Spirit that lives within you. The Bible says that your flesh is part of the world and it's an enmity between it and God. And the works of the flesh are always going to be against God. You struggle with our flesh all the time. But here the Lord comes through Egypt and says to him, sends Moses and says, let my people go. You like this? They made this for me in Africa. Mm. Let my people go. That's what the Holy Spirit is crying out and saying, let my people go. Let them go from this bondage of religion. Let them go from this bondage that the earth is trying to hold on them and make them think that they're wrong. They're not right. You are right. Jesus Christ is Lord and God is coming and he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth and he has his own laws and commands and statutes and obedience that we have to follow and that we have to obey in our lives and there is no compromise with it. Whether we like it or not. Our flesh doesn't. But believe me, our spirit but so I want to say to you today is that what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Another part. Releasing you. Releasing you. Releasing for whatever has you bound so that you can be the son and daughter of the kingdom with authority. I'm not just talking about a child. I'm talking about a leader in the nations. God wants to affect the nations to goodness. God wants to affect the nations to truth. God wants to affect the nations to trust. God wants to affect the nations to love. God wants to affect the nations for justice. Who is going to do it? You. This is the revival of the Holy Spirit that's coming. Each of us has our part. Each of us has our plan. God has already made it out. Wrote the script. Put the person in the place for it. 
My gifting is not the same as your gifting, but your gifting is not the same as mine. But each of our giftings, we all need to accomplish this mighty task before Almighty God to affect this world for the good. And he says, the strongest force that we need in our lives to free us is love. Mm. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of love. <coughs> That's why we got to come together. That's why we come to church. That's why we, because it's easy to love your own family. Well, sometimes it is. <laughs> <laughs> challenge to learn how to love and that we can love and respect one another here and then our witness is so strong that we can carry on this work that God has for us to do in the world and I want to say to you there's not one of us that hasn't been affected by the world I look back, you know, Pat, and, and I think oftentimes, I wish I could take back some of the things I've done in my life, you know? But I can't. I wish I could go back many times and redo stupid mistakes that I have made. But I can't. They're there. What hope do I have? In God. My hope is in the Lord. He, he makes right our wrongs. That's all I can tell you. He pushes us on moving forward. He tells us to dust the feet off our shoes and just go forward. Move forward. You know that there are things in your life that you've had to experience that are holding you back. But the only hope that you have is the Holy Spirit who can heal you and heal your memory of these things. Heal these bindings of us. When you get into certain difficulties in your life and they strike fear in your heart, years later down the road, something like that comes up, you all of a sudden shake inside. You don't even know why you're doing it. You didn't even think it was there anymore. Because of the effect. But I want to tell you, that those things are dead works and God wants to deliver us and says to the, let my people go from these things. Hallelujah. Let them go, let them go, let my people go. And I'm telling you today, put your trust where it needs to be. In the Lord. And the power spirit and let's move on together in love to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish those men and women young desiring to serve God with all their hearts built the place that we are standing they fulfilled the plan that God had written so long ago. There's always new chapters. And there's always new things God wants to do. Do you want to be part of God's plan? I tell you, He wants you. He chose you. You're right. Expect Expect God to hear you when you say, I want to be used, Lord. Change me. I don't want to leave this life the same way I came into it or walking in it. I want to be transformed. I want to, I want to really, really know you. Amen. <laughs>